You know, when I'm pressed by time, I love to do that very simple first course, which is airing in wine that you can buy at your supermarket. I put that with a little bit of sour cream, some uh, diced apple and diced cucumber, a little bit of Tabasco. I always put a good dash of bottled horseradish, a few capers, you can put lemon juice as well. You mix that thoroughly. You have a beautiful first course if you place that right in the middle of a nice line, a glass lineup with beautiful salad like this. And this is a wonderful first course in seconds. I am Jacques Pepin and this is fast food my way. Happy cooking. Production funding for this series has been brought to you by Cuisinart, with the next generation of food processors. From bread dough, to pizza, to stir fries. We do the work to save you time. Cuisinart, the next generation. And by Scharfenberger, makers of fine artisan dark chocolates, recipes available at scharfenberger.com. And by Spectrum Organics, a purveyor of fine culinary oils and condiments. Spectrum, the taste of goodness. And by OXO Good Grips, makers of kitchen tools that make everyday living easier. You know, keeping it simple doesn't mean that your menu lacks elegance. This menu is perfect for entertaining and giving you some time with your guest. And what I'm going to try with uh, I'm trying the sausage here, but the menu will start with gnocchi, potato gnocchi with eggs and truffle oil, pretty elegant. Then we're doing a skirt steak in the style of grandma, that is my mother-in-law. And I am starting here the sauté, the curly mustard green with hot sausage. So you, know, you can buy, of course, those sausage at the supermarket. Make sure that you remove the skin around. I mean, the casing usually is on it and uh, that you can do without, although sometimes it comes without the casing. And then you want to start sauteing this. Those are hot Italian sausage, you know, and uh, I like it with the hot Italian sausage this way. You can cut that actually in smaller pieces than I have, but it's fine this way as well. We're gonna put some onion in there, a little bit of, you know, coarsely chopped onion. And we are, you don't have to be that careful with this here. Okay, that's gonna cook a couple of minutes. I'm gonna cover it. So that you want, of course, the sausage to be totally cooked, but of course we're going to cook that with the mustard grain. I have mustard grain here. And you could do the same thing actually with cabbage, you could do that with kale, and you could even do that with um, different type of salad, certainly the escarole type of salad, or even the iceberg for that matter would work fine. So this of course, uh, the, the, the stem, the stems sometimes are a bit tough, although these are pretty tender. So maybe we can put those stems as well. Just cut them coarsely this way. And uh, again, this is getting ready, so it really doesn't take that long. And while this is cooking a little more, I'm going to show you those steak here. So those are what we call skirt steak. Well, you go into the market, you will find those skirt steak, but very often what you find is not the skirt steak. It's in between the skin of uh, the cover of a uh, a large piece of meat and they have those layers in between that they take out now and sell because it looks this way, long, elongated like this, and it looks a bit this way and they sell it at skirt steak. Unfortunately, they are far to be as tender as this. The skirt steak is actually the diaphragm. You know, inside the animal here, there is a diaphragm, two pieces of meat, very long like that, attached to the flank of the animal, which expand and contract the diaphragm. And those two strips of meat are really very tender. You can see that one side here is pretty fatty, usually. So you may want to remove some of the fat 
here a little bit if you want but this is used of course in fajita which is the classic way of using the skewered steak okay so we do steak of about uh, five six ounces here at the most I have four steak here that's good and that you can prepare that and season them a little bit ahead let me check on this I think my sausage are pretty nice and brown now so I'm going to put the mustard green in it and this reduce a little bit so I pile it up on it if I just wash them there is water in it this doesn't have too much water maybe I put a little bit of moisture in it just to start the process that's it that on top and now salt and pepper on each side this of course often are grilled you know but in that case we're going to do a sauce with uh, garlic and scallion so I do them in a skillet and what we want to put on top is a little bit of the the rind of the the lime See, that makes it like grandma used to do my wife Gloria was born in New York but her mother was Puerto Rican her father Cuban so this is the way grandma used to do her steak so we like those flavor so the rind this is a neat thing to do the rind and then a little bit of the juice I'm going to put on top that's it so I'll take some of the the oil from the the anchovies here and maybe a dash extra olive oil I'm going to put them on high I put salt and pepper here so when it's ready not quite I'll saute it briefly and you can see that this is about about up to three quarter of an inch so it will take like a minute minute and a half on each side on really high let's see this yeah now that's getting soft I forget whether I I put salt in it no I didn't so salt always taste pepper another couple of minutes it's ready now this is ready that's it couple of minutes on each side and I'm going to change side because that stove goes faster than the other one and this is about finished anyway so here what we are going to serve it with is the garlic scallion and uh, and that's about it so the scallion usually I cut the end of it and any damage leaves you know like at the end but otherwise you should use all of the scallion and I think that two scallion maybe three should be enough you see my steak now good so the scallion are just coarsely chopped yeah 
here we are, and garlic, garlic, crush it coarsely, and then we can rock it to really make a puree out of the garlic, and actually we're going to do the same thing with the anchovy filet. Here they are. Chop them coarsely, put them with the garlic. This is the kind of mixture that I often do, the garlic and anchovy filet, very powerful, but it gives you a very definite taste that I love. Okay, I think my steak are basically cooked enough now. Here they are. Good. In there now we're going to put garlic and chevy filet. Remember there is already the lime juice and lime uh, lime rind on top of this. So you have a lot of taste. Okay, and now I want to deglaze that with a little bit of a chateau sink water. It's one of the best ways to deglaze. You could put a bit of stock, but water just for the crystallization in there. So I need uh, three, four tablespoons. That's about it. Very simple. And that's ready. So as you see, you would want to cook that at the last moment because it really doesn't take very long to cook. So, let's see the, we can see the, the bubbling here and the size and you just have a little bit of juice. So here is our mustard green. That we can put in, uh, I think that I'm going to use this for that. big bowl of mustard green. Last time I did that, actually, I did it with escarol, which was delicious and very classic, probably more in the Italian tradition. Now here we are. And then the steak. I will pick up this one, maybe. Make sure that you get all of your juice in there. And the steak there will be slightly rare, which is the way I like it with this on top. Hmm. You can see that here, if I were to cut it, that is going to be nice and red, which is the way you want your skirt steak, grandma. And now let's make the gnocchi with eggs and truffle oil. And uh, my market has gnocchi like this, and I always have that in the cupboard when I'm ready to, uh, you know, some people come unexpectedly, I say, let's do gnocchi. And in that case, I'm going to do it with eggs. So those are potato gnocchi. And they are, should cook them in like one layer like this. And they are already pre-cooked, but still, pretty tough, so you want to moisturize them and put water. So I'm going to put uh, at least a cup of water in there and uh, a little bit of olive oil. And what you want to do is to cook this until there is no more liquid. So it will have absorbed all of that liquid and it will get rehydrated and soft and the way it should be. So. I'm going to cover this, bring it to a boil, and cook it. It's going to take about five, six minutes. You can check to see whether there is any oil left over. So we have scallion here for the garnish. Okay. Which we're going to coarsely chop. This type of dish, you know, you could do that. You could do that ahead 
but you would finish it up with the eggs just before you serve your guest, you know. And that wouldn't take more than two or three minutes. So again, many of those dishes can be partially done. Okay, here we are here. I have uh, eggs with this. So maybe four or five eggs. Notice that I always break my egg on something flat. When you break it on something flat, you don't even see the opening here. Yeah, you put your thumb and you open it this way. If you do it often on the side of a bowl like this, the shell goes inside and introduces bacteria and very often break the yolk as well. So conventionally, it should be broken this way. Small detail, you know, but that's what makes good cooking. Okay. Salt, pepper in there. Well, at the end, I'm going to put some sour cream as well. With it. So I'll beat my eggs. I love anything with eggs. I was on a deserted island. If you give me eggs, maybe potato and chicken, that's about all I need. You know? So let's see this here. Now it's boiling very nicely. So again, keep it covered. I'm going to have some truffle with this on top. You don't have to have the truffle, but a friend of me brought me a truffle. So uh, those you can see, this one has been open. It's kind of whitish inside. And when the skin of the truffle is very rugous, very rough like this one, it usually indicates the summer truffle, tuberum estivum, so-called. And they are beautiful. They don't have that much taste, the summer truffle. The best one are, of course, the winter truffle, called tuberum brumale, and sometimes tuberum melanosporum. And I'm not even talking about the white truffle of Piedmont, which this one, tuberum magnatum, cost zillion of dollars, you know. But this is nice. A little added touch, cut it with a vegetable peeler like that in very thin strip. We can put that on top. And of course, we're going to have Parmesan cheese as well. So let's see where this is at. You can see, I can see now that my gnocchi have no double in size, but almost. And uh, you can check them out to see. Yeah, now they are tender. Very tender, so now I wouldn't even want to put the lid back on it. We can finish cooking this way. And uh, maybe a minute more. And with this, you know, I think that a little, uh, what do I have here? And I have a verdiello. Verdiello, it's a grape from Portugal, theoretically. And this one happened to be from uh, Australia. So they are the new screw cup cap. It's a bit green, it's a bit harsh. That should go well with that type of dishes. Smells good too. Always taste the wine. In addition to the truffle here, I have truffle oil. And this is oil that you can buy now in most specialty market, which is infused with truffle or an essential oil of truffle. I can hear now that it's sizzling. I think it's ready for the eggs. Up, I have to put my scallion first. Scallion should cook a little bit in there. Okay, no one will know that. Let's put the eggs. Here we are. The pan that I have here is almost enough to finish, I mean the heat that I have in the pan is almost enough to finish the cooking of the eggs. I'm going to put a little piece of butter in there. Can never miss. This is a kind of elegant first course, you know. You know, I serve things like that, I call a brouillade from egg brouillé. And very often in France, we serve that on salad, like on a Boston lettuce. See, this is cooked enough. I want the eggs not to be too cooked. And to stop the cooking even further, and a bit of enrichment, I'm putting a little bit of sour cream in there. Okay. It's kind of decadence, but good. Okay, here we are. Eggs 
ver. I'm sure you never had gnocchi this way. I think the recipe is for four. It would serve probably eight people. We put a little bit of the truffle on top of it. Oh, maybe I could have a little more green. Put some scallion there. On top. And maybe a trinkling of that very special oil. And that's it. You have that. You are in heaven. Gnocchi with eggs and truffle oil. What you can add on top of it, which I have here, is the Parmesan cheese. And you would put it at the last moment. It's not, it's not uh, absolutely necessary because I have a lot of taste in it, but it still put another layer of flavor. So a little bit of all this, that's for me. Okay, the gnocchi with egg and truffle oil and parmigiano reggiano. And now for dessert, a chestnut cream Mont Blanc. The Mont Blanc, of course, is the largest uh, mountain of, uh, of the Alps. And a Mont Blanc is already kind of a big, big thing with white on top. That's why we're going to do some, some uh, heavy cream here, or just whipped, you know, some whipped cream in there. And uh, the Mont Blanc is always done also with chestnut puree. So I'm going to start beating that cream. And as you see, with the, the cream is just a gentle emulsion back and forth, different than the, than the egg white. Because if you beat it too much, then your dessert will taste slightly of butter rather than cream. But this is beautiful now. So it takes a minute or so. So what we have here is chestnut spread, which often came in smaller can than that, sometimes in big can. It's different than a plain puree of, uh, a plain puree of chestnut because this one's got sugar, it's got vanilla in it, and it's very sweet. I put a little bit of dark rum in there. Dark rum goes so well with this. If you don't want to put it, it's fine. You know, if you don't want to put alcohol in it, it's okay. So this is a very rich cream. I was a consultant working at the Russian Tea Room in New York, and I remember doing what we call a Turinoa, which is a mixture of the chestnut, exactly this, with about the same amount of chocolate melted together and some vanilla and you would put that into, uh, and butter, and you put that into terrine mold, let it cool off, unmold it to slice it. That was really good. Okay, so you put a little bit of this. Makes a great, elegant dessert, especially around Christmas. So there, chocolate, as I say, goes so well with it. Break some uh, biscotti in there. You know, you can have the one with or without the chocolate, it's okay. Or both, for that matter. A little bit of both. So I do those type of dessert often, often uh, with, uh, with this, and you can even put a little bit of uh, chocolate on top of it if you want. I have some chocolate in my microwave oven here that I melted, that the easiest way of doing it takes about a minute, takes about a minute or so, and you have your chocolate melted in there. I could have a little trickle of uh, Ch chocolate is not absolutely necessary, but that's really gilding the lily, as we say. Okay, this, and then I'll have my, you know, whipped cream on top. You know, another thing that we use for holiday are those which are actually crystallized uh, violet, you know, and that's kind of classic in Christmas dessert, you know, very often to put a crystallized violet on top that I can put, or maybe a little spring of mint, which is just as good for a beautiful chestnut cream Mont Blanc. That kind of dessert is very elegant using ready-made ingredients. Very happy to do. I hope you do it. Happy cooking.
Visit our website at kqed.org slash morefastfoodmyway to learn more about Jacques Pepin. You can watch shows online, view extra clips of Jacques in the Kitchen, print selected recipes from the series, and meet some of the people behind the scenes. Call 1-800-937-5387 or log on to channel9store.com to order the book with over 100 recipes and color photographs for $32 plus shipping or to order the complete series of all 26 shows on DVD for $39.99 plus shipping. Production funding for this series has been brought to you by Cuisinart with the next generation of food processors. From bread dough to pizza to stir fries, we do the work to save you time. Cuisinart, the next generation. And by Scharfenberger, makers of fine artisan dark chocolates, recipes available at scharfenberger.com. And by Spectrum Organics, a purveyor of fine culinary oils and condiments, Spectrum, the taste of goodness. And by OXO Good Grips, makers of kitchen tools that make everyday living easier. KQED television production.